Okay. Um, thanks for having our paper in the program. Um, this is joint work with my colleague Yi Lu from Tsinghua and uh, Jinting Fan from Penn State. Uh, Jinting will also be here to answer questions in the, Q, uh, in the, in the chat box. Um, so in this paper, we'll look at the, the return on the return on uh, transportation infrastructure investment. And we utilize <coughs> the information in, the, in a port choice of exporting firms. So that's the uh, best basic idea. So the subject we are looking at is the expressway uh, expansion uh, in China during the, uh, the, fast, the, fast, the, uh, the period of the fast expansion uh, during uh, uh, 1999 to 2010. And during this period, the, the, uh, the, the uh, investment in infra transportation infrastructure has been increasing steadily from 2% in early 2000 to 5% uh, of GDP in 2010. And the resulting expansion is plotted here. As you can see, the network starts a, a, with a, a few uh, string lines in, the, uh, in 1999 and ends in a dense network uh, initially connecting all the major cities and the coast area in 2010. So we want to, uh, we want to uh, ask the question, what are the impact of the transportation infrastructure improvement on regional and aggregate economy, especially we want to focus on the uh, welfare effects. And if you look at the literature, uh, this has uh, been a large literature, actually uh, uh, the, earliest <coughs> the earliest ones uh, um, date back into the 19, 1960s, uh, which, which is based on the measurement approach, basically is asking about uh, the cost of saving uh, from, the, from the road improvement. Uh, um, if we can measure what is the cost saving and if we can measure what is the, well, how, how much is the trend, uh, how much is the shipment, then we can roughly have an idea how much is the cost of saved. And uh, then later on, we, we, ha we have seen a, uh, a large literature on using reduced form uh, by, look, by looking at the, uh, the variations in a, uh, in, a, uh, in a road network and looking at the, this, uh, as, uh, uh, cities that 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 they uh, potentially benefit different from those, those those network expansion and look at the differences basically a, a different deep design. Um, but we all know that this is a uh, uh, this topic is probably general equilibrium nature because the uh, the, the transportation improvement uh, mainly reduces the domestic trade cost and it would have a impact uh, on, on the welfare to to, 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 uh, to, to the trading behavior, uh, uh, which is a general equilibrium topic. And the recent progress enabled by the, uh, the new general equilibrium framework and the quantitative methods have, have made, have made uh, great progress. And there are two main approaches. One is to derive a model uh, theoretically consistent, um, sufficient statistic and uh, uh, use a regression approach, uh, which is uh, li uh, labeled by market access approach. Uh, the other one is directly using a, 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 a structure model, general equilibrium model, and do counterfactuals within the model to look at the effect of those, of those uh, expressway expansions. So, uh, but the key elements to both, uh, both approaches, uh, as you can imagine, is to identify how the road network uh, affects trade cost, uh, uh, the mapping from the road network to the trade cost. That's also the main subject of the current paper. And, uh, um, the logical flow should be like this. Okay, so uh, we, we roughly somehow know that uh, once the network changes, then the travel distance between any two of the cities will change. Uh, uh, well, th this is shaped by the geographic feature of the uh, network, uh, the, the roads and the cities. And then uh, we can map uh, this, 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 this change in the travel distance to the change in trade cost. But here, but here we have a, we need to estimate a, uh, some kind of elasticity that map the map the uh, distance to the trade cost. And the remaining thing is, some, uh, is somewhat um, uh, more uh, better understood is how the trade cost as, uh, changes trade flow uh, based on the trade elasticity and to the general equilibrium, equilibrium model affects aggregate, aggregate variables like employment, wage, and, and consumption. And so, so, so this subject is of the, of the interest of the current paper. And if you look at the literature, how this is, this is done, um, basically, as you can imagine, the most straightforward way is to directly measure the freight rate. You ask, you ask uh, how much is the cost in shipping goods on uh, different kinds of roads, and what is the time cost, and what is the, uh, if it's expressway, then there's your toll. So then you can, ca you, can, you can calculate all those freight costs externally, and, uh, and then you, you have an idea 
uh, what is the change in the freight rate after uh, a network expansion. And, um, and the other two approaches remain, uh, remain on some model assumptions. Uh, for example, uh, with some maintained assumption on the, on the, uh, 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 the how, how firm price and uh, how, how firms set their prices, then you can, you can look at how this price gap uh, across regions change after a transportation infrastructure inf improvement. And then, uh, then you, roughly under, you roughly understand that price gap change contains some information on the change in the trade cost. And if you compare this, this over time after the, uh, after the uh, uh, road dispute, and you know uh, what, is, what is going on there. And the, uh, and the third approach uh, basically uh, uses a more structured approach and try to infer the change in trade cost by looking at the change in shipment flows. Uh, oh, okay, here, here we have, we have to be careful. The literature has now only relied on cross-sectional difference in shipment flows uh, for, for different city pairs geo uh, located geographically. So this, uh, but the idea is still that uh, by looking at different trade flows and ship flows, it contains information on the, on the, on the trade cost and then uh, this just provides some information on how the um, network maps the trade cost. However, we see that the, the first approach, external measure, even though it's straightforward, it rules out some non-monetary component, and we think uh, there's some uh, behavior response in the data that can, that's also informative about, the, about this, uh, this, 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 how the, uh, this trade cost elasticity. And, if, uh, and for point two and three, uh, for, for, for the second method, you really need this good to be uh, homogeneous, uh, which is restricted studies to a small group of pro products, usually uh, agricultural goods. And, uh, and for the third one, for the third one, uh, the car as I said before, the current literature has mainly relied on cross-sectional variations in shipment flows. And, I would, uh, and we would say that both, of, both the third, second and third approaches uh, rely, have, uh, have a very strong data requirement. Uh, basically you have to, you have, especially the third one, you need, a, you need some, some kind of commodity flow, some kind of uh, bilateral trade flow uh, to, use this, to use this method. So what we do here, is to use the very commonly accessible data. Uh, I guess everyone here has access to this data is uh, uh, basically the Chinese custom data. However, we use the level source of information in the data, which is how a exporting firm chooses its, chooses the ex, chooses its port uh, to, 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 to trade to the rest of the world. Uh, so, and also this, this data, as we all know, it also contains uh, the, the, the price information uh, when you are uh, for exporting. So, uh, so combining all this information, uh, basically we, we, we basically we observe uh, the routing behavior of exporting firms and also uh, how, uh, and potentially uh, how uh, the, the, the price differences when they choose different port to export. So um, the idea is very simple. So can, can, uh, the simplest uh, uh, case study can be viewed, uh, can be viewed as, as below. Suppose a city A exports more through port one than port B, then you would think that the, the, there must be some reason for that. And one of the potential reason is that the, the trade cost between city A and port one is smaller than the trade cost uh, between city A and, the trade, uh, C, uh, and port B uh, and port two. And uh, if, if, uh, if they're, they're, they're uh, travel distance between CTA and the two ports also are, are different due to the network structure, then uh, this trade cost information, basically uh, uh, th th this, this, different, this different exporting share basically has, uh, has some information on the, on the relative trade cost and then will help, will help uh, discipline the mapping from the road network to the trade cost. So- uh, I have a question. I have a, yeah. I have a question on this, if I can ask. Yep, so sure. uh, I understand what you're doing. But does this miss out much of the infrastructure investment that is purely domestic from province A to province B, uh, you know, from East China to Western China, etc.? Um, we look at the, the we look at the the whole expansion. So basically, we look at the uh, the, the the whole network expansion as I showed you before, um, and uh, and we. We, we do look at several uh, mega projects uh, that you, uh, you can label as uh, more local, local projects. So what's your concern there? No, no, the concern was that, you know, uh, you, you may miss out on, on many of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, point A to point B that is purely domestic. 
and that is not related to export. That's true. That's true. So uh, yeah, that's a good question actually. So here the the reason why we can use this information is that uh, they like domestic transports. They use the same road infrastructure, right? S think about the inland in inland city A. If you want to export to, for example, uh, a, a a port uh, uh, in Guangzhou, for example, you think about the inland city export in Guangzhou, he has to use some. He, he has to use the same road infrastructure that he uses to trade uh, uh, with with inland uh, to the coastal city. That's our that's our assumption here. So we basically we want to use uh, use uh, use this use this information to identify the trade cost elasticity, and we want to extrapolate that trade el cost elasticity to domestic to domestic trade uh, trade cost. So that's that's our 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 our, our approach. Yeah. So, so, but I just want to follow up quickly yeah. on uh, Sharad's question. So, so, I'm wondering what is the source of uh, variation here? Yeah. So, for, for instance, you know, one route uh, becomes uh, a lot more crowded just because of domestic uh, activities. Yeah. And then you were interpreted as, uh, well, uh, trade cost uh, between A, big A, and uh, I don't know, between A and B or whatever. Yeah. And then, how would you think of uh, this uh, much more crowded route? It is, uh, say that you have, a, say you, you build up a, a highway connecting the two uh, cities. Uh -huh. Even if with the improvement of infrastructure, yeah. then, you know, the route becomes a lot more crowded and, uh, you know, trade cost increases. So in the model, how are you going to, you know, separate the two things? So you're, 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 you're talking about the endogeneity of building an expressway, right, between two cities. Uh, is that one of the, is that your question? No, 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 the, the no, question no. is just, you know, two, one route yeah. uh, becomes, becomes crowded, uh, right? more crowded, yeah. you know, and, uh, and this is a kind of newly built uh, highway, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then how are you gonna disentangle, separate the two effects? One is, um, say, uh, you claim this is declining trade cost. So, uh, yeah. And the other is, is purely by domestic forces. Um, so you think about the uh, if we can if we can observe the crowdless of each each road, right? We can just parameterize the trade cost as as a function of the of the of the road and its crowdless. And we can, uh, but but our, our key our key strategy is to is to say that the the in the inland firms when they when they export to ports. Uh, they, when they, sh they have to ship the goods to ports, and they have to use the same crowded expressway. So if the if the if the expressway really becomes crowded, then it will just be reflected by that it it, it 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 exports less from 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 that port that he has to go along that expressway. So we it's are still using there. Cross-sectional variation instead yeah. of uh, over. We're using over. We're using overtime variation. We're using overtime of variation. And I guess uh, I will, uh, following Michael's question, there is a like the first law of uh, road congestion. When the roads are very congested, yeah. and you build a, a new road to, from A to B, yeah. it, it barely reduces the travel cost or travel yeah. time because you attract the traffic from uh, other roads. Uh, correct. Yeah, on the margin. On the margin, you would think that is correct. You think about the on the margin, you would equalize the cost of building road and it, it, its benefit, right? So it's, it's, again, the gain is almost zero. But 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 you, all this, uh, but but uh, uh, so you're you're also talking about the endogeneity of building expressway. Because the reason you are building expressway is because everything gets crowded. But we are we are finding some exogenous variations, hopefully. Yeah. So. So, so basically, some some expressways that are built, uh, they are they are meant to connect uh, crowded areas, but they benefit uh, uh, they, they benefit some other cities because this, the cities that happen to be on the on the way, which will it's not, not it's be. It's not very just uh, sorry, it's not just the uh, endogeneity of building the uh, the expressway. It's the endogeneity endogenous response of yeah the yeah expo yeah exactly exactly. So so, so, so our, our our we have a routing model. We we estimate a routing model basically. Uh, when the network structure changes, we allow the rerouting of drivers. We take into account. So you, con so you control for that changing volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our uh, we estimate when we estimate the elasticity, we control for that changes. Yeah. 
So anyway, so let me let me proceed. I still not not, not quite get uh, Michael's question, but but hopefully it's become clear when when when, when I present what we do. So so uh, the so the key casing uh, as 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 Michael mentioned is that we use overtime variation, which is which is probably new relative to the literature because uh, we do see those expansion there, and we we, we view that some of this variation is, is exogenous, and the literature has all has provided some 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 good. Uh, Good, 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 good method for doing that, and uh, this is probably not very important. But we do do un uncover uh, some sector heterogeneity in the in the, in in the, in the uh, reliance on, on transportation infrastructure. Basically, the trade cost uh, is heterogeneous uh, across sectors, which we want to use this information and to 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 embed it into a into our general equilibrium model. And the remain, remaining thing is. Uh, Perhaps relatively standard that we we uh, we use a multi-sector, multi-region model, and we after after estimate this parameter, we evaluate what are the welfare gains, and we take into uh, uh, many details of the uh, of the, the of, of China. Uh, um, so uh, some pre uh, some preview of the results. So uh, so this is a uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, roughly the 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 the, the trade cost uh, that you would. Uh, that, that is estimated out, the, out of the model. So for each 100 kilo parameters, uh, kilometers, so this is a semi-elasticity, okay? And that's our, what we must have estimated. So each 100 kilometers, it cost 7.4% uh, uh, and express uh, uh, for, uh, for a regular road and a 5.5% a, a for expressway. This is a percentage of value, okay? And uh, uh, this is related to the to the sector heterogeneity I mentioned. Basically, if the if the good is uh, is more heavy, as you can imagine, uh, so the cost would be higher. Uh, we do find some difference in cost uh, by levels, but not on the elasticity. Uh, that's uh, that's also very interesting, even though we we don't we, we don't highlight it. So and for the quantitative evaluation, basically our focus is uh, is what I show I showed you the expressway expansion during this period and. Uh, it's this is fifty thousand uh, kilometers viewed, uh, and the total cost is a uh, uh, from the official statistics. This is from official statistics, but we discounted in uh, discounted into two thousand ten uh, China's GDP. So it's roughly ten percent of the uh, two thousand ten GDP, and the welfare gains is five point six percent. And if we compare the uh, the gain, but but this gains since we use the static model, so this is the gains for every period, and using some uh, using some uh, uh, discount factor, and uh, by comparing this cost, uh, we uh, this will imply a 180% net return to investment. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, our benchmark result, and uh, and uh, and I think that the, the the broader picture of this project is to ask what are, what is the information that we need uh, for such an evaluation, and we we use basically the exporting behavior as a as one set of information and then we we ask what are the remaining sets of information that is relevant for example in our full model we have we have several features like we have different regional specialization and we have the sector heterogeneity in cost uncovered in data and we have the intermediate intermediate linkages that's the thing you you, uh, you you can think you can think about it may, may be important and actually uh, all of them are, are important uh, if you shut down each piece of them then you would have a it would, uh, it would uh, that would under underestimate welfare gains, and if you reduce the whole thing with, into a one sector model uh, and with the same estimated elasticity, then the implied welfare gains would only be 0.74 uh, percent compared to 5.6 percent in the six yeah. model, and that would imply actually a negative return instead of positive return. All these things shows important uh, how important those uh, those those ingredients are. And uh, something we were not going to talk. I have a, a question again here. When sure. you look at the return to the yeah. highway expansion, yeah. uh, uh, that depends. I mean, you know, uh, not taking into account the congestion part, it's rather the opposite. When you have roads, and then uh, if you have very little uh, road usage, that would affect the return, right? And then yeah. there would be heterogeneity in the return. How, how do you deal with that? So, um, so that's right. Uh, in 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 the current version, we don't have uh, congestion uh, for yeah. roads. Uh, we, uh, yeah. Not taking into account congestion, but you, you can have full utilization. Let's say uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you have ninety percent utilization versus ten percent utilization, so, that's uh, going to affect the return. 
But since we, we, don't, we, we don't model capacity, then there's, not, there's no well-defined utilization, well-defined utilization. So, so I can show you a, our implied, uh, the model impl implied shipment, um, but since we don't have a, uh, and, and the, the, basically the usage of the roads are implied by the model, by, uh, by the trade uh, between regions, and their, and their endogenous uh, routing behavior of those, of those, of those shipments. However, uh, we don't have a notion of capacity. Uh, be, uh, we don't have that the, the, the road is, can only can take care of uh, how much shipment per year. We don't have that loss in this model. So there's no way to talk about the uh, uh, utilization rate. But if we think about the how, how it's being used, it's already in the model because the, 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 the trade has to happen uh, through ground transportation with, which uses those roads. So, so do I understand correctly then that the return is the comparison of, you know, the, uh, after the investment, the transport from A to B relative to before? Is, is that, is that yeah. basically so, how you value yeah. the return? Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. So it's basically okay, so the asking... Cost, the cost of the capacity is not taken into account. Correct. So then let me be, be precise. What is the return? The return is that uh, change the network, nodal net, uh, expressway network from 1999 to 2010. Okay, got, it, then, got it. Yeah, and then what is the total welfare gains? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just have a quick question. So with respect to the welfare effects of a highway expansion, I wonder if you uh, account for the impacts of a highway expansion on internal migration. Oh, uh, we don't have migration. We don't have, we don't have the, its effect on the trade cost. Uh, uh, migration cost. We don't have that. We don't have that. Uh, but that's an interesting angle. Yeah, I would say so. The current focus is on reducing trade trade cost of goods. So uh, there is no relocation of production in, in, uh, in your model. There, there is because uh, regions have production linkages. Uh, they can. It actually the after the road is built, the, the expression is done. Actually, the region also changes their specialization. Um, so, uh, what 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 kind of what are kind of reallocation are you referring to? So it's related to migration. So people move, uh, and the firms choose different places to open because the cost is different, and yeah. that would be uh, that's not necessary to be a trade specialization, right? Uh, yeah, that that will that will be one factors changing the changing the regional specialization. We do have we do have a version with with mobile labor. Uh, but we just don't allow the migration cost to depend on the transportation infrastructure. So if, if that's your, what you're asking. Okay, okay. Yeah, but we Sorry, can... I, I see, I see a participant raising his hand, Xie Yang. So now I think now you can speak. Are you there? Uh, anyway, just, just go okay. ahead. So yeah. let's move on, okay. Uh, so. So uh, the, the third exercise, which is not presented here, but I think we think it's also important is that because due to this routing behavior, uh, the model actually becomes very nonlinear. So the traditional uh, first order approach by looking at, it, looking at the cost saving basically from, uh, 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 from building a road is actually inaccurate. Uh, but instead we provide a second order uh, correction, uh, which, which has, needs to be done after the model is parameterized, uh, but it's a sufficient statistic. So you don't need to compute from the factors. Uh, you can you can estimate the welfare gains accurately after a second order, and so these are the other explorations on what are the uh, information, the minimum set information we need for such analysis. So I already mentioned much of the much of the uh, uh, literature here, and uh, so there's a lot of literature on the uh, impact of infrastructure projects. And uh, what are we doing new here is uh, basically a new way of estimating the trade cost elasticity with this very commonly accessible data, and. Uh, uh, our paper is not the first one to recognize that the, the domestic infrastructure improvement, uh, transportation infrastructure improvement would have effect on export. Uh, but, but, but here, the, uh, our focus is a little bit different. Is we are using this information, then we extrapolate a little bit uh, for domestic, uh, domestic uh, welfare evaluation for this transportation infrastructure instead of focusing on the, on the exporting uh, itself. And, uh, 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 and I'd like to mention that the, uh, uh, one of our contribution is that we uh, we we use our we use our estimated uh, the trade cost uh, to construct a a regional uh, 
uh, uh, regional I/O table, basically, uh, because we don't rely on anything uh, 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 that that is currently existing for Chinese economy uh, 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 for that for the regional I/O table. Uh, uh, we all use this transportation information and provide that provide that table. This is going to be helpful because we all know that the current uh, regional input of the table in China is imputed. It's imputed uh, and it's imputed mainly from real way. Uh, but we know that most of the uh, most of the uh, uh, the, 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 this, this merchandise shipped domestically probably re rely on uh, ground transportation. They rely on uh, uh, roads, road, road, road transport. So we think this is going to be a a, a something that, that that is a helpful. So uh, for the remaining of the remaining of the uh, talk, so for uh, I'll, I'll first present you the most straightforward reduced form specification that one can come up, and to illustrate the variations we are using. Uh, but then I will tell you what is missing in this in the in this reduced form specification, and then motivate our structure model, and then we will describe the model. And I'll briefly mention what is uh, uh, how, what are the ingredients in our multi-sector, multi-region model, and then I'll present the quantitative uh, quantitative results. So, um, so the, the the data we are using uh, for the road network for the transportation network is from 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 the uh, Bamslow and others paper. Um, so basically, uh, so the left hand side is what I showed already uh, showed you before as the uh, as the expressway in 1999 and 2010. And we complement this expressway with a, 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 a network for a regular road, uh, which we fixed in 2007, because the change in regular road is not, not so much during this period. So uh, we choose to be transparent and to choose, choose it to be in, in one year. And then uh, for our reduced form specification, uh, this is just for reduced form, uh, we, we, the only information we use from this, uh, this, note red, this red network is, looking, uh, is by constructing the city-to-city -city, uh, shortest path and, uh, uh, and, 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 and calculate its length. So, uh, but for doing that, now uh, uh, we need to take a stand on the relative cost of expressway and regular road. And we made an assumption for the reduced form, uh, uh, for this reduced form analysis here that the that the expressway is roughly 50% uh, cost saving compared to regular road. And uh, of course, in the structure model, we will, we will exactly estimate this. Okay, so now uh, you can imagine after making this assumption, now for each city pair, we can just uh, calculate the shortest path and cal calculate its, uh, its, its, uh, its length. And we define it as a, uh, the distance between two cities uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at each of the time, each of the years that we have, the, we have observations. And the, the specification, specification is very straightforward. So on the left-hand side is, a, is a, 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 the quantities. Uh, uh, we, we choose the benchmark to be quantities, but it can be value as well. So uh, exported from uh, CTO to rest of, the rest of the world via a port D at a year T. And the right-hand side, uh, the, the the main variable of interest is the shortest distance I, I, I described before. And uh, the, the, the coefficient of interest is this semi-elasticity. And we control for uh, CT port fixed effects, pair fixed effects. Basically, we are using the overtime variation. And, and so we, and we can also control the CT time fixed effect and port time fixed effect to control for the, uh, as much as we can. And uh, then we estimate this. Uh, but uh, but at this point, uh, I, I want to I want to mention that this is pure behavior response. So there's a there's one more step if you want to use this elasticity to infer what is the trade cost elasticity. Why? Because you can imagine this basically tells how this how the distance changes affects the exporting share uh, at our different ports. But this can be this can be because the the, the, the distance, the, the trade elasticity, trade cost elasticity is very, very high, or it can be because the elasticity of those porting behavior is actually very high. Uh, so basically, if you think about this, uh, uh, this, 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 this exporters are very responsive to the change in trade cost, then it can also lead to a large uh, gamma. So that's where we want to disentangle using the, using the structure model. So uh, we mentioned here, uh, so, uh, we, we, we use some very, uh, we use some uh, uh, plausible exogenous variations in the data. 
And the idea is basically that uh, since much of the expressway expansion is directed to the primary cities, and if we uh, and for those small cities which happen to be on the network, those those network network expansion can be viewed exogenous to them. So, uh, so that's 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 so one of the strategies is just to exclude those major cities directly targeted, and uh, uh, a a you can do a little bit more um, than that is by uh, constructing a hypothetical. Uh, 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 a, a road network that connects all the major cities and use that hypothetical uh, road network as the instrument for the actual uh, actual express with, uh, uh, network build. So uh, I'm not going to not going to go into the details. Um, but let me present you uh, the, the, those estimates of that reduced form equation. So uh, the the main point we want to make out of this table is that uh, using over time variation is very very important. Okay. So so for the first column as a regression without controlling for the pair fix effect. So, and this is what the literature has been, has been doing so far uh, due to the lack of the, uh, uh, the, the, the commodity flow data, I would say. Uh, so, and, uh, and, uh, and we see that after, after controlling for the pair fix effect, the coefficient reduces a lot and, and uh, 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 we can control more the, the, the port and city uh, time fix effect uh, or exclude major cities and all the co uh, and the coefficients do not change much, and which are all significantly uh, uh, smaller in, the, in magnitude compared to the uh, compared to the cross-sectional uh, coefficient. And, uh, uh, and here we already see where you already see the 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 express and regular roads. Uh, their 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 uh, elasticity are different, uh, hinting on the uh, different uh, different trade cost elasticity uh, of the two types of roads. And for uh, for robustness, we use uh, there is a pseudo a poison maximum likelihood estimate, uh, which takes care of the uh, zero zeros in the in the in the values. Um, but, uh, but um, we, we have a question about the shipments. Yeah, yeah sure. You use the custom data to look at the shipments. Yes. And so some of it is not not necessarily from the original exporter, but from intermediaries. So how do you deal with that? Uh, from intermediaries, but. Um, so, 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 we are we are looking at the um, so the firm can can uh, we can find multiple instances of a firm in the custom data, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it has a production side, address of the production side, and we use that to construct as as our our region city of the firm. So you 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 match the the, the industrial survey data with the exporter. No, no, no. We did. We didn't no. do that. No. So, so you don't. Have, so then you don't have the production side, right? Not you don't know whether they are production, or or just the intermediary. Okay. So, but, but I guess it's still yeah. if you can observe the same intermediary who is exporting, uh, from Shanghai or from Ningbo to somewhere, uh, I mean some other city from to, in Zhejiang and goes to Ningbo, that's still captured by the but it's different from a, a firm that directly producing exports. Okay, that's a good point. Still capture some of the intermediary. That's that, that's a good point. Probably we can exclude some products that are most like that more likely to be intermediary goods. Right. So I guess the intermediary uh, is related to the Jahar's uh, question that uh, I, I'm guessing the a lot of intermediaries probably are located strategically closer to the coastal. So also, then you so so then you may, you may kind of overweight in your your estimate on those uh, if you have a so, lot of um so so one one thing I'm 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 a little bit uh, not clear is that how much how to what degree it will affect our results because if the intermediaries when they export they are still going to use the uh, the same right. road infrastructure right right but what I mean is that but then you can check maybe intermediaries are uh, more strategically located closer to the ports. I and see, therefore, you, your estimates, you overweight those firms. Okay. And then you can to underestimate the, 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 the impact of the real inland, real uh, expressway impact okay. on them. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Uh, uh, I think that. Uh, 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 here we go. Well. Um, yeah. uh, I think you, I mean, even though you're, produce, you're producing reduced farm results here, yeah. it's still important to consider um, the locations of the destination countries. I mean, imagine I'm going to ship things to South Korea. Yep. I mean, let me choose the Shanghai port rather than the Guangzhou port, right? So, you know, yep. as, in a sense, like these firms are not choosing only 
chose choosing routes only to minimize domestic trade costs, but also overall total trade costs. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, it's in the port fix effect. If the composition, of the location of the port matters for that international trade pattern, then it's in the port fix effect. If the composition does not change over time, then uh, or it, it should uh, it change over time. If it even if it changes over time, it's captured by the port fix effect. And only if it changes over time and by from destination uh, origin cities, then we should worry about. You do yeah, have a it, it, it changes over time, you know, because China and the WTO in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I agree. Yes, right? yes. You uh, think about the cities uh, like uh, like a removal of multi fiber agreement, and then I ask for a lot to Europe. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are talking about shipments yet. We are not about, uh, but, but, but even if it changes over time, it's in the port fix effect. Only thing that's not captured is, uh, is it, it has to be city, origin city specific, and it changes over time. It's not there. Uh, but we do have a robust version of control for the, uh, for the S destination, which is available in all the customs data. That's something we did, yeah. But I think Xiaodong's concern is more, more important. Um, uh, we exclude major cities so that we 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 just stress as concern to some degree, uh, but I agree we should check more carefully and we should probably exclude those intermediary firms or in, include exclude those intermediary products. Okay, uh, but but this is a, but the main message is that these two coefficients are very different, and we, that's why we think that using over time variation uh, is going to be important for this estimate. Uh, if you if you want to interpret this difference of the number, you can think about this would overestimate the trade cost elasticity by three times. And for the first order, that will be uh, overestimating the trade, uh, trade cost saving uh, by, 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 by uh, 200%. So, so, the, uh, yep. so I can see a lot of things can happen uh, at the port cities. So for instance, so why an exporter choose to say, uh, uh, choose to go through Shanghai probably is just because, uh, you know, overall institutional environment there is better than the other cities, than the other uh, ports. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the import fix effect, port time fix effect. Right, exactly. So you have that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we control for port time fix effect. So it's there. So if the city becomes more access, accessible to, port city becomes more accessible to international, uh, then it's going to be there. And the only thing not there is yeah, the, the inland city that is, uh, that, that is just has to be over time and to be city port pair specific. Uh, which is perhaps it, it is, but hopefully our, our strategy for using this exogenous variation uh, is, 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 is still helpful. And here's some, 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 some robustness using, using the, the IV I mentioned before and using the, the sector, sector, uh, sector, at sector level, but uh, which, which are, are still, the coefficient do not change much. Okay, so uh, just to summarize and motivate the structure model, so the, the reduced form elasticity uh, is around 15%, and the using cross-sectional variation uh, will uh, overestimate this. Uh, but here we have two we have two uh, caveats for doing this. First of all, is that we, are, we, we already take a stand on the relative cost expressway and national uh, and regular roads uh, to cal to calculate the shortest paths, and we, we don't have a rerouting basically. We don't have the optimal routing uh, in the current analysis. And this is and this is also confounding with uh, with the uh, because it's a behavior response, so it can come out from the uh, from the trade cost elasticity, or it come from the port choice. So so we want to address these two issues in the structure model. So in the, in the structure, a part of the structure model is a routing model. Basically, allows how uh, trackers uh, traders choose different routes after expressway expanded. And there we can accommodate all those uh, heterogeneity in preferences for routes, and we can and, and and we can we can we can identify separately what are the what are the uh, uh, trade cost elasticity, which of the which is of great interest are, are, are great interest, and also other elasticities. And uh, uh, you, you may think that if we want to in extrapolate the analysis to a domestic set setting, and uh, then we have to take into account other transport modes, for example, the railways and airship shipment. And that, that can be uh, uh, done in a structure model, and uh, uh, and also we have we still need to infer the level of the cost because currently it's only on the on the elasticity, and we need a model for kind of factors. Uh, still running out of uh, running a little bit <laughs> tight, um, but but let me just uh, start with the uh, routing model, and then I can be brief on the on, on the on the equilibrium model, which is more which is more common. 
So this robotic model is, 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 is from the literature, uh, is from the uh, uh, Alan uh, uh, Clark's recent work, uh, but, we, we, but we, we, do, we have some extension to accommodate two, two types of frameworks, uh, two types of uh, networks and the transshipment. So, so, so think about this, this, this sim a simple example that a tracker wants to ship goods from, uh, from O to D, uh, uh, but there are other, uh, uh, but there are different routes. So he can, he can choose to ship it directly or go through the two other routes passing uh, CTL or CTK. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the cost for taking a route is specified to be an iceberg cost. So basically, if he wants to go this route, then the cost is just going to be exponential uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, the, of the some 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 cost of elasticity times uh, times uh, uh, the, the the distance of this route. Okay, and now we have three direct paths, and we assume that among the three direct paths, uh, so the tracker draws a preference with a fresh fresh share distribution. So then we can calculate what is the average uh, average route cost. From O to D, and we lab uh, and we label it as the trade cost uh, going going through a, a road road network here, and here uh, we uh, from under the fresh share distribution, it's just going to be the sum of different the cost uh, the the cost of going each route, which under the iceberg cost assumption is just going to be the uh, the product, and to the power of minus theta, and uh, we have to multiply some constant uh, here, but this is coming from the fresh share uh, assumption. And so we can record this routing uh, and this, this routing uh, pattern, uh, this network structure into a matrix and summarize the routing behavior using this matrix. So this is a, uh, think about this is a matrix representation of the previous network you see. Uh, so, so uh, and, uh, and we, we, can, we can express the summation, ex ex summation of the, of the, of the, uh, of the, the term in, inside the bracket uh, by the elements of this routing matrix. Uh, for example, here, uh, uh, we know that if, the, if, if, if you take only one edge or one step uh, to, go from, so to go, go from O to D, then the component is here. If you take two steps, then you would have, uh, for example, uh, OL to LD, uh, this route, uh, which appears here, uh, you will get a, uh, you will just uh, multiply the, 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 this entry of the matrix and to this entry of the matrix. And you will realize that this is just going to take the square of this matrix and get the same O, o and this entry of this matrix. So well, then I, you, well, can, I, you only have five minutes. Okay, so, okay, so good. So, okay, so fine. So the basic idea is that you can summarize an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary road network using this uh, matrix representation and it, it emits an analytical form which takes the matrix as an argument. And our contribution among this, frame, uh, uh, among this framework is to add a, add a, a additional, a, 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 a superimpose two networks in, uh, into one. And we show that this is still an, uh, admits analytical uh, uh, expression of the, as a function of the trade matrix, even uh, with, with, uh, with, uh, with trans some transshipment cost. And, uh, uh, and this block is eventually going to be incorporated into a, a, a hierarchy structure when people choose different modes and uh, to export and to ship to the rest of the uh, rest of uh, ship to other cities, uh, but but that's not very important. So the the, the idea here is uh, the important idea here is that you can express a, a road network and all the routing behavior using this matrix. So the generic equilibrium model is very standard. So we parameterize the model uh, to the at the, at, the, at the city level, and. Uh, 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 for completeness, we also have the rest of the world, and we have uh, uh, 25 sectors. And the benchmark model is uh, is done with uh, immobile labor, and uh, uh, so uh, everything else is standard. And final good consumption is assembled using a a a, a Cobb Douglas uh, preference. Um, so um, so the, the the main strategy of the uh, quantification part, I already showed you the variation, but now we are going to estimate this nonlinear objects. Okay, this nonlinear object, which is still a, sum a summary of the, of the whole network, but previously we only, only used the shortest path information, but now this, this, all the network information is contained in this, this nonlinear object. And uh, the, the, good, the good part about, the, about the, uh, doing it in, in, in this way is that uh, when you estimate this, this nonlinear uh, equation, you don't have to solve the equilibrium model because it's all contained uh, in, 
in, in this mod, uh, in this block, and the only information you are using is is this is this uh, export share elasticity with with respect to uh, uh, ex export change in export share after the the change uh, of this of this network of this network, and uh, uh, so that's where we we we, we start. And uh, uh, I, I don't have time to talk into detail, but I want to tell you that uh, what is different between this nonlinear routing model and the linear model is that it captures some extra thing in the uh, in, in in the network structure, uh, which is obviously uh, there because that, uh, obviously the reason why we are using this nonlinear model, and uh, and it can be well well identified uh, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a, using our data. So that's the only message from the last three slides. Actually, last four slides. And sorry, sorry, I have a quick question. So you, you have actually, so in, in, in Alan Akalikis model, you only have uh, driver's uh, uh, heterogeneous preferences, but now you have uh, kind of exporter's preferences for different Correct. parts. Yes. Then how so do you separate, separate have, identify the two things? Yes, exactly. I have the last four slides uh, explaining this, but I don't have time for now. So can I talk to you later? Uh, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, but it's very, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very clear. It's identification, identification is very clear. Okay, so, uh, so from this slide, the only thing I want to mention to you is that this, this routing elasticity, as Michael asked, is very, very large. It's much larger than the port choice elasticity. Okay, that's something, that's something uh, I, want, I, want to, I want to say. Why, why is this important? It's because this basically says that uh, in the routing, uh, people, are uh, people are most likely still choosing the shortest path. But there's, there's something, it's not infinity. So this is large, but not infinity. Okay, so uh, this relates back to uh, one of the earlier questions is uh, the model predicted shipment flow um, uh, for, for the, uh, or you can think about this as road usage. But again, since we don't have a capacity, we don't have a utilization here, but it's roughly uh, is consistent with our prior that the business road uh, is probably the, 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 the backbone is connecting the loss to the south and it's is, it is around the Yangtze River Delta. <laughs> and uh, I want to just present you uh, 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 probably this table and that's, that's a lot, our last page. So this is, uh, this is the effect of the expressway expansion. What we are doing is that we calibrate the 2010 economy and then we change the 2010 network back to 1999 network. And then we ask what are the change in aggregate welfare. The welfare is defined as a, uh, based on the social welfare function that can replicate the competitive equilibrium in a calibrated economy. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, it, but so it's comparable um, across, across the, two, two, uh, the, 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 the two kind of factors. Um, so aggregate uh, welfare gains is 5.6%, as we summarized before. And uh, uh, it also increased domestic trade uh, over GDP as a share of GDP, which we do not observe, but we do observe what is the increase in exports in GDP in this period. And the, the, actually, we, sh we see that the, the, the improvement in the in this expressway alone can account for account for a, a, a one third of the uh, increase in export uh, GDP share during this episode. And if we want to ask, uh, if we want to uh, put a perspective on the welfare gains, it's roughly 16% of the uh, TFP increase uh, during this episode. Okay, uh, something, these are all the things that I already summarized in my introduction. Okay, so this is the conclusion. So basically, uh, we, made, uh, we made two contributions. The first one, uh, the first one is that we use this over time variation contained in exporting data, exporting uh, choice of exporters. And we show that this over time information is going to be very, very important and we uncover some uh, sector heterogeneity, even though I don't have the time to go into the details, but, but, uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully this is something that's important. And we show that uh, indeed they are important because uh, all those regional differences and sector differences are going to be important in, uh, in the counterfactual analysis to infer the uh, welfare gains. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, thanks a lot for that. Uh, uh, Albert uh, set a very high standard for as a, as a timekeeper yesterday, uh, so I have to be tough on time. Sure. So the first presentation formally ends here, and we still have uh, two or three minutes uh, for for the first break. Uh, for those of you who want to leave, uh, please come back uh, in two or three minutes. Uh, uh, but for those of you who want to stay and uh, uh, torture Wenlan further.
happy to to raise uh, questions. Yeah, thanks, Michael. We can only we can only entertain one or two questions. So, if no question, please. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, there is a question, right? No. Okay. So, please. Uh, now you have time to uh, answer my question. Okay, Jintin, do you want to greet others? Okay. 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 He refused to do so. So, okay. Let me briefly. Uh, you are you are exactly right. Now you can. You, it's it's uh, it's very difficult to. Identify these two actually, uh, but 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 uh, then we, now we realize it's, it it can be identified very carefully, uh, very 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 very, very uh, clearly. So uh, this is can be can be used uh, showing here. So uh, what I, what I'm what I'm showing here is is that uh, these objects is nonlinear parts. Okay, you can view you fix all other parameters. Now what you are interested in is just kappa f and kappa, uh, theta f and theta. You're only interested in these two. Okay, and the given theta, theta f will just uh, just the determine of the slope of this object. Uh, 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 how it, how what slope should the best of this of this nonlinear object fit fit the fit the uh, observed uh, observed uh, 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 export basically. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, going to be uh, pinned down by the by the slope. At average slope given theta. So oh, that's that's showing here. So the the scatter is the is the is the, is, the, is, the, is that linear object, and the horizontal axis is the shortest distance. Now because we are using over time variation, so now it's all in changes. Okay, and uh, and uh, the the scatter is uh, and the the red curve is is this the is this um uh, is this linear part. Ah, it's a linear part in the shortest distance. So basically, when you change theta f, you will change you will change how this model prediction, uh, the slope of between the model prediction and the shortest path. But we know that in the data there must be a certain slope that best uh, best fit the data. So that's where fixing at theta you can you can tell what is the theta f from this this, this slope that best fit the data. Okay, so now let's let's think think about what is what is how what is theta here. Uh, so uh, the theta is. Oh, is I really think you. I'm asking. I was asking a different question. But anyway, so we can we can discuss uh, that later. Okay. 